Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mortgage Pro Talk. This is Deep Dive, where every week I dive deep with mortgage professionals and leaders discussing their journey to where they are now and what they've learned along the way. My name is Dan Cooley, and I'm excited today to be joined by Nicola Nikki Dolan, uh, who is a mortgage uh, loan originator at Princeton Mortgage, uh, although I think you, you like to call yourself a retail therapist uh, so Nikki, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing, I'm doing excellent. It's cold. It got very cold all of a sudden. It's like, it's decided it's almost uh winter, I guess. But other than that, I'm doing awesome. And you're, you're from New Jersey. Uh, I, I know this for a fact. I'm not going to pretend like, uh, like, oh yes. Are you from New Jersey? I know you're from New Jersey. Um, so, you know, we're both, we're both in the same state, but I feel like we should have Jersey pride right now. I feel like we should get something out. Well, Princeton mortgage is also from New Jersey. So yes, That's I am born and raised in New Jersey and Princeton mortgage is also from New Jersey. Who was also born and raised in New Jersey. Yes. Where, where, uh, where were you born? What, where's your hometown? So, um, my family's from New York, which a lot of people guess quickly when they speak to me. And um, my father got his first job in Philadelphia. So we moved to the town of Westmont, New Jersey, which was an easy commute into the city. So that's where I began. That's great. And what, what like, can you describe your childhood to me? Like, what was, what was, uh, what, what was, you know, little Nikki like? Little Nikki like, okay, another big surprise. I'm an only child. Um, my father was a corporate attorney. Uh, my mother was a working woman around the hours that I was not in school. Unfortunately, my mother passed away when I was seven and my father remarried when I was 10 and he asked my permission if it was okay to marry her. So I had a lot of power in my family. <laughs> Well, I, I, first of all, I, I'm so, you know, I know, I know, uh, I'm very sorry about your loss. That that's, that's crazy hard for, for anyone at any age and for a kid to go through it. Uh, you know, that's, that's horrible. That's horrible that you had to go through that. Um, what, uh, so, so your stepmom, you got to decide, uh, I, like, all right. I got to approve right, her just you. like we approve our loans. I got to approve the stepmother and she is, um, 90 years old right now. My father has since passed away and I helped take care of her. She unfortunately had a stroke, so she's in uh, a facility right now, but she's in the best facility and um, I see her often. And before COVID, I had a person that was with her on top of that. So I'm really lucky they didn't have any children and life was still all about me. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, and it sounds like, you know, all, kind of blessed all around. Yes. Um, and how, how important would you say family is to you? Family is the single most important thing to me. And um, I hope it's the most important thing to my clients also, because it's one of the first things we discuss. I, I, I agree. I know that, you know, you, you and I have had conversations uh, outside of this setting and, and I'm, I'm, a very, um, I'm a, you know, uh, I, I think everyone kind of is, but I'm a family man. Like I love, I love my family and I take the most pride and, and joy out of my time with, with my kids. Uh, do you, do you have children? I do. Um, I have three children who are now in charge of me. I used to be in charge, but, um, it seems we have a role reversal. <laughs> uh, my oldest child is pregnant with my second granddaughter. So I have a granddaughter and, um, how old she is two years old, the love of my life. And I oh. hashtag her. We love Lucy on my Facebook page. <laughs> and she has a little following. She is a true diva. We love fashion. Oh, too. so cute. Um, oh, my, so second cute. Child, oh, man. my second child is another daughter. And she works for Holman. If you're familiar with Holman, I'll give them a plug because they've been wonderful to her for almost 10 years. And my son is a behaviorist. So he works with autistic children. 
So I guess I should say my oldest is an attorney, but she is the holder of my granddaughter, so her status has changed a little. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy how that happens. My so um, my sister, younger sister, is pregnant. Uh, she's expecting her first in February, uh, but you know, for the longest time, you know, we had my son Declan, who was you know the 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 prince, the little prince of the the family. He was the first on both sides, mm -hmm. right? So we did everything we could to kind of like not let them become too uh too spoiled as both grandmothers like just converged on him uh <laughs> and giving all all their love and attention and then now we have a a uh a, a baby girl although not a baby much longer she turns uh she turns one this uh on sunday oh, believe happy it or not birthday. Uh, tegan i know i can't i can't even I mean, where's the time go it's crazy to me um but so you know, I definitely, it's just funny. My sister has said, like, finally, I'll have some leverage in relationship with mom yeah. because she's, I mean, half the shirts my mother owns is, uh, my kids call her Ma. Mm. That's, uh, so she's Ma. And, and half the shirts she owns has some version of, like, you know, Ma, hashtag Ma life or, like, you know, good to be a Ma or whatever. And my sister's like, this is crazy. I was the baby of the family. I've been replaced. Yes. And I'm like, we've all been replaced. Yes. So, <laughs> oh, that's great. That's super great. And what what has that transition been like? Like, so, you know, I'm always interested in this, cause, again, speaking because of my mom. What's what's the difference? What was it like becoming a mother be, compared to being a grandmother? Like why? It seems like becoming this a grandmother is, great, is like more this intense. This is a great story. So I was very close with my father. And um, the day I had my first child, all of a sudden I became a saint. And I turned to him and I said, if I would have known this, I would have had children at 16. Like there is this thing that happens when when your child has a child. I was actually so lucky. I was in the room when she gave birth. It was right before COVID. I was told I wasn't going to be allowed to be there, but I was so well behaved that they let me sit on the sofa and watch the whole thing. And I, I watched my daughter give birth. I was so worried about her that she would survive the experience. And then once I knew she was going to live, I turned and now I want to count the fingers and toes and I run after the baby as the baby is born and I'm counting and then they hand her to my daughter and I felt like I had given birth. And then I understood how much of yourself you when you watch your child become a parent and then you watch that child grow. It's just the most wonderful experience in the world. And I think a percentage of everything I make goes directly to her with joy. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's a beautiful thing. I really did. I, I, I'm, I am, you know, it's not just, uh, I really am fascinated by it because there, there's, there was such a clear shift, not only in my mom, but, but in, you know, Becky's Becky's parents, of course, and then like my relationship with uh, Becky's my wife, my relationship with Becky's uh, parents and her relationship with my mom and, and just such a it's just it's fascinating. It really is. It's like a it's a real moment, right? Like it, it's a, a life changing moment. And I know that's true. Um, but it's really kind of a there's a ripple effect for everyone in the family. Well, I and didn't so get just, to choose my own thing. name. Because I was told I wanted to be grandma. But my mother mm. is still living, as I told you about her. And right. so she's grandma. So I was told that I am so young and cool that I am Grammy. So Grammy. That's a cool name. Grammy. I was a good told name. it was cool and I'm cool, so I went with it. My my uh so my my mother in law is Grammy. Oh. Uh except except who and she's also young and cool. But uh, my son couldn't say E sounds like it's only recently really that he's like started to get it. I don't know what was going on. He just didn't get it. So she became Gaga like against like, like she was like, we'll teach him Grammy. And I'm like, he, you're Gaga now. Like <laughs> Gaga has stuff. Like Lady Gaga. Uh, that's so, a diva name. I might go for it. That's what I'm very nice. That's I'm going to tell her that I'm going to use that. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. All right. So let me ask you. So, so what, when you, what did you want to be? What's the first thing you remember wanting to be when you grew up? A mother. 
I wanted to be a mother. Mm. I had lost my mother, maybe. That might have been part of it. I wanted to have a family. It was always very important to me. Um, but I also wanted mm. to always work outside of the home. That's really, uh, you know, so what, how did you, so, so you wanted to be a mother, you mission accomplished, mm -hmm. uh, now a grandmother. Um, what, what led you to becoming, you know, a loan originator? Like how did you, you know, what was so the journey to I get to, to that to career? School, but my parents wouldn't decorate the apartment for me to go to law school. They thought that I might've had my priorities not quite in line. So I started to work at a woman's boutique where the person who sold the most became the manager. So I sold the most and I became the manager and I started to make a living. They weren't real happy. They wanted me to fail. So I would go to law school. My father was a lawyer. But I worked there. I got great clothes. I had a great discount on my clothes. And I was basically, I got married and I was in a holding pattern. I wanted to have children. So that was all going to work mm. for me. What an interesting, just to pause for a minute, what an interesting place that was like, whoever sells the most is the manager. Did it like rotate? Like if every year, if there was a new no, best salesperson? No, no, this with... was, uh, they had lost a manager. I think she was at a drug rehab or something. And uh, their idea of a manager was probably more like I am now. And at the time I was 22 years old, I graduated from Syracuse University and um, I was pretty connected in the community. A lot of the people that came to shop there it was high-end women's clothing. And I knew a lot of people and I think I have great taste. That's awesome. Well, I, I don't think there's any denying that, first of all. So, so you go, you're working at this boutique, um, you, you get married, you, you have your children. So what, what was the road that led to the mortgage industry? Uh, this is an interesting story. So I worked retail for a while. Um, I think I could go back to my old job, but they've hired another manager because it's five years later. I stayed home for five years and had three children. Um, I actually was sent back to work by my doctor because my third child, a son, was not speaking at two years old. And I was trying to do everything I could do. And he told me to leave him alone and go to work. I had way too much energy. So I called the company I used to work for. They had a new manager. I went to another company. They said, oh, we're going to have a boutique in this town without a manager. And I said, oh, when that doesn't work, call me. And two months later, they called me and off to work I went. So I managed a store and they weren't nice enough to my, to my customers. So I left them and then I went to a really high-end boutique. And um, the girls that had been there for a long time didn't love that I was pretty young and we would have like one client a day because it was really expensive clothing like newscasters would come in and um, it was way too slow paced for me. So then I came up with the great idea that I would go to the gift shop across the street and work for this wonderful artist. And I had so much energy that she started lighting candles in the back to calm my energy levels down. <laughs> All right, so happen chance would, would go on and I ended up um, owning a bakery in my town I had seven stores. What was the name of the bakery? Oh, it's the Blungent Bakery, classic cake. And uh, it's a whole long story. It's part of the demise of my marriage, but I had a great time running the seven stores, running the retail part of it, taking people's cake orders, writing happy birthday to all the children, knowing all the families. Everything was wonderful. And then there were some people when it was time to sell there were these realtors and these loan officers that would come in and buy stuff for closings. And I said, hmm, I have to find a new career. I'm smarter than they are. I'm going to become a loan officer. If I become a realtor, I have to go out on weekends from morning till night. I can't do that. My kids are in college. Um, I have parents to take care of. 
I can be a loan officer and do this. And I also was getting my personal life together and getting my credit together, getting all sorts of things in my life together because I knew my marriage was not long for the wear at that moment. And I became a loan officer. What a story. So many, so many different directions and all of it with this like very much like Nikki Dolan, like energy to it, like go, like go get them, run in and, and make it happen. I think that's, that's so cool. I wish your bakeries were still around. They are just because are. I want to go. Cake. Oh, they're, so they're still around. I really worked really hard not to let them close because I felt it was the community's bakery. And um, they are still around, so not to worry. You can still get cake from them, but I happen to know where the best cake is in every category. But now right, with well, a lot I'm of different to places. To. We're going to need a list yeah. that we can put on the website. All right, that's awesome. Um, and so, so it doesn't have to be loaner. You know, your your mortgage career. I guess what was the hardest moment in your career as a whole? I think the hardest thing was when I was in my late 40s and I was no longer going to be the owner of a company. And I realized that if I went into retail, well, I want to work. My father worked till he was 83 years old. And I really believe went downhill after he was no longer working. So. I didn't want to give up working. I, I want to stay current. I want to be vital always. I always said I don't want to be the old lady in blue eye shadow. So I wanted to work. And now I'm saying, who's going to hire me at 50? You know, how's this going to look? Who's going to want me? And I'm a great salesperson. I'm a salesperson with morals and values. I don't know how much morals and values the industry had at that time, but I think I really lucked out. Um, I was having um, a bit of a personal mess with my life, and I figured, you know what? As a loan officer, I'll learn about credit. I'll be able to help people. I'll find people like me. The market crashes, and uh, people are all complaining. They're not making any money in the mortgage business. But Dan, you're not a genius. How much money had I made the year before in the mortgage business? Before the year before you started? Zero dollars. Okay. So if I made ten dollars, I made a lot more money than I made the year before. <laughs> and now all these nowhere to go but up. Right. So I'm making more money than ever in mortgages. And all of a sudden they come in and they want to regulate our industry. And guess who got the second highest grade on the exam after not having an exam since college when we had to all of a sudden become licensed loan officers, licensed after taking exams, not just licensed by sending the state money. And all of a sudden, everyone was forced to hear the regulations, care about what we were doing with people, and all of a sudden, the industry was coming to me, and I was becoming more valuable. Such a, such, you know, one thing I hear you talking about that seems very important to you is like an, a genuine care for your customers, right? The, the, the shop, the bakery, now, now what you're doing here, you know, there's a through line of, of really, you know, of seeing that those customer relationships is more than just transactional. Do, is that, is that a fair statement? And, and, and can you tell me more about that? Um, it's the most important thing. Um, I am constantly being told by people that I will be eliminated by, um, people doing everything online. And I tell them, you know what, on my tombstone, they're going to write, here lies the last person who didn't do everything online. I will not have to not talk to my clients. I speak to everyone. 
Um, I have an assistant. She says, how come your, your clients don't like to talk to me as much as everybody else's clients will speak to me? And that's because I know about their families. I, I know about their finances. I, I talk to them about sending me another client. When they do a, a cash out loan, I say, I wanna pay for a wedding. I wanna pay for a second home, but I don't want you to mess up your credit again. I mean, I care about them. I, I do this to make people's lives better. Mortgages are my vehicle to make people's lives better. Hmm. Really well said. I, I think I think that that, uh, you know, uh, it's funny you say that because we just uh, saw something come through uh, a story on, on Scotsman Guide about, you know, the importance of that in face to face interaction that that real connection with people that that is not something that's going away mm -hmm. as in this industry. And I, I would venture to guess in most industries as as you know, processes are becoming more digital and more streamlined. And, you know, I think that I think that uh, humans want human connection. And I, I think that that's this is just my opinion, my guess, but I think that that's what it's boiling down to is that, you know, and even even the, the younger generations, you know, whether it be millennials or Gen Gen what Gen Z, Gen Y, whatever the next one is, like, you know, are not you would think, well, they want just digital. They don't want to connect with people. That's not what what JD Power was seeing, right? Is like they they no, as a matter of fact, they they do want to know that there's a human being looking after them and connecting with them and and so I just think it's so fascinating. You know, I think I, we haven't really grappled yet um, as a society. Like, you know, I think everyone's like, oh, everything's going to be digital and it's going to get rid of all this, these things. And I, I don't know that that's been decided yet. I don't think that's true. Uh, people like looking at other people, especially after the last year and a half. I think it's become very clear how much we want human connection and want to connect with people. Um, so I, I actually think I think there's some power to what you're saying in terms of, you know, staying in connection with people and, and not relying just on on processes, regardless of what your industry is. I think I think it's important. Uh, so that's that's really cool to hear. Um, you know, I, I love I, I, I always start all these these episodes. We're not many episodes in, but I will continue to. <laughs> to uh to start these episodes talking about childhood and and what you learned growing up um i just think it's important i think it's very telling about people what is the lesson from your childhood that you use frequently that or that that has been used in your life frequently so i went to quaker schools i was an only child and um i don't know how many people have heard about the american friend service committee i mean it's it was about um, a lot of the things that are so relevant in our society right now. It was about bringing all people up. It was about um, if you have the ability to share and help, do it. And I used to, instead of do Halloween candy, I used to collect for the friendly beggar and I used to send money to UNICEF. I don't even know if people could still do that. I know people don't open their doors, I guess, but I didn't get candy, I got UNICEF money. So um, I think between that and um, my religious upbringing taught me to give back. So I think that um, my family taught me those values. So, if there's one thing that I would like to think that my childhood taught me, and that's that um, the piece of all, I guess here's the story. This is what I tell my kids. Um, you could be the biggest doctor in the world. You could be the person who does brain surgery that no one else knows how to do. But there's someone who has to come in there and clean that room. And if they don't clean that room right, your patient's going to die. So you better stop and think real hard about how you treat everyone because it takes all of us to make this world work properly. What a beautiful sentiment and, and I think the perfect way to end this episode. I, I, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, 
Nikki, thank you so much for joining me and, and just an excellent interview where I got to learn so much more about you. Um, and I think it speaks so much to, to you and your character and, and, and to what you're trying to do. Uh, for anyone listening to this, oh, well, first, actually, I need to get better at this. I keep like cutting myself off with this question. Where are you licensed? Um, I am licensed in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Florida. And my next two are so, going to be Georgia and South Carolina right after the first of the year. So if you are looking for a home in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, in Maryland, in Florida, or depending on when you're listening to this, South Carolina or Georgia, is that right? No, 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 no. I have a partner that has 38 states. So listen, call me for anything. I might be able to help you out. If you were looking for a home in almost any state, in any of the, the good states. Right. Let's call it what it is. Yes. The 38 good state. I don't know. That sounds like a political thing. I don't mean it like that. But if you're looking for a home almost anywhere, or if you have need advice, you're looking for uh, the best cakes, uh, but, you know, categorized by type in New Jersey, um, you know, Nikki Dolan is the person to talk to. Um, you can find her at, at uh, N-I-C-O-L-A, Nicola, Dolan, D-O-L-I-N, dot princeton mortgage dot com um where else can they can they find you nikki i have a facebook page i have a business facebook page i'm on linkedin my phone number the is TikTok's everywhere. coming just call me and you don't have to call me because you want to do a mortgage you can just have questions you can call me about your credit i have a lot of first-time home buyers that call me and just tell me they're scared i have parents that call me and ask me how they can help their children just call me. Just call her. Nikki, thank you so, so much. This has been awesome. Uh, and, you know, I, I will talk to you very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.